everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and this is the start of another reading vlog. I am actually going to start a new series today, which is really exciting. This, as you can tell by the title, is the start of my new series, which is centered around celebrity book clubs. Um, I have always been very curious about celebrity book clubs, about the books they pick, whether they're really good, and I definitely have some major ones that come to mind, you know, Reese Witherspoon's, Oprah's, Emma Watson, Emma Roberts, and like Jimmy Fallon, I think has done one. There are a lot of celebrities who have started book clubs and I'm very curious about if the books they pick are good. So I am starting this video and this series with Reese Witherspoon's book club, which is called the Hello Sunshine Book Club, which has a new book every month. And I believe all of the books are centered around like women's stories. And many of them I believe are female authors. And as of right now, when I'm filming this intro, it is the very end of April and there have been 35 book selections so far. It started in June, yeah, June of 2017 and has gone through current day, which like I said, right now is April 2020. By the time this video goes out, I'm sure it will be May 2020. Um, there have been 35 picks, there will be 36, and so far I have read six of them. So the first thing I'm going to do here is talk through the six that I've already read, then I'll talk through the ones that I'm going to read for this video, and then kind of my plans for future videos in this series. So to start off, I've written down here the six books that I have so far read from Reese's Book Club. So the first one is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. This was the very first book club pick for this book club and it was back in June of 2017. It's a contemporary book about a woman named Eleanor Oliphant and I've described her in a couple of my videos as like the adult version of Amelia Bedelia because she doesn't really understand, you know, figures of speech and metaphors and idioms. She takes everything literally. That's a contemporary book. I read it actually just last month and I really, really enjoyed it. I gave that one four stars. The next book uh, from the book club that I've read before is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng and this was the September of 2017 book club pick. I read it, I believe, at the beginning of last year, beginning of 2019, and I absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. So that is another contemporary book. Uh, it's a little more hard hitting, I would say, than Eleanor Oliphant. And it has recently been made into a Hulu TV show, which I have started. I think I've only watched three episodes so far, but I do plan on watching the rest of the series. Uh, another book that I've read is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens, which was the September 2018 pick. And yet again, I absolutely loved it. I read that book just earlier this year in February or March, I think. And I also rated it five stars. So we're off to a very strong start, which as you can tell is really the biggest reason that I'm so excited to do this series to see if all of the books are that good. So Where the Crowd is Seeing is a historical fiction book, which I'm coming to realize that I really do enjoy. So I'm excited because I know that Reese has picked a couple other historical fictions throughout her book club. Uh, the next book is, that I've already read is The Library Book by Susan Orlean, and this is the first one that I did not really enjoy. This is a nonfiction that really is about libraries in general, and it really focuses on the Los Angeles library system and a big fire that they had there. And I was hoping it would be a lot more interesting than it was. I've seen a lot of great reviews, and there were parts of it I liked, but just not all of it and so I rated it two stars unfortunately. The next book is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid which was the March of 2019 pick and this is another historical fiction and it kind of reads more like a contemporary in my opinion but it follows this band called The Six and the singer named Daisy Jones who joins The Six and kind of their rise and fall from fame and what really happened. I gave that one four stars and then the last book from her book club that I've already read is The Last House Guest by Megan Miranda, which was the August 2019 pick. And that is a thriller. I read a few of Megan Miranda's thrillers so far and they've all kind of been averagely good. I rated The Last House Guest three stars. I enjoyed it perfectly fine. There was just nothing about it that was super shocking to me or that was really memorable that I really enjoyed, you know, more than any other thriller. So I enjoyed it moderately fine, so three stars. So you can tell from all of that that most of the books that I've already read from Reese's Book Club, I have generally enjoyed. I don't have a burning hate for any of them, and most of them I've given either four or five stars. So I'm really excited to read more of the books from this book club. So I, because I have already read six of the books, I have chosen to read four more to round it out kind of to a perfect 10 uh, going forward in this series then I'll probably pick you know five at a time or whatever and coincidentally perfectly I already own 
four books that are on the book club list. So the books that I'm going to read, the first one is The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. This is a mystery thriller. It's one of Ruth Ware's earlier books. I've read two Ruth Ware so far. I've read uh, The Death of Mrs. Westaway and The Turn of the Key. And The Turn of the Key has been super, super popular on booktube. It's how I first found out about Ruth Ware. I loved that one and now want to get to all of Ruth Ware's other books. But I really don't know much about it. I've heard that it's kind of disappointing when you've read Ruth Ware's later books to go back and read her earlier ones. They're not quite as good. Um, but I'm hopeful. I think that thrillers are super personal and what is shocking and interesting to one person is not necessarily what's good to another person. So every thriller I think I go into with an open mind and I'm excited to try this one. The next book is Something in the Water by Katherine Stedman and this is another thriller that I've actually heard even less about. I know nothing about this author or this book so I'm going in totally blind to this one. Oh and the Lion Game was the August 2017 pick and Something in the Water was the pick from June of 2018. And then the next book that I picked out is Whisper Network by Chandler Baker which I believe is one more mystery thriller. Um, so if you don't like mystery thrillers, this video might not be that interesting to you, but future future ones will be different because Reese's book club has several different genres scattered throughout. But again, another mystery thriller, super boring. I don't have much to say about it. I don't know anything about it, but this was the July 2019 pick. And the last book that I'm going to read for this video is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. And I have heard actually great things about this book. So I believe this is just a contemporary. It might be a little bit hard hitting, which is totally up my alley. I'm excited to dive in. I believe Kylie Reed is an author of color. And I think this book kind of dives into, you know, race and privilege and a lot of hard hitting sensitive topics like that. And I'm very excited to read it. And this was the January of 2020 book club pick. So the most recent. So the way that this is going to work is I'm just going to do it totally vlog style. So I'll update you as I read each book. And at the end, I might be able to give a little sneak peek as to what I am planning on reading next for this series. with my first update for Something in the Water. This is the first book that I picked up for uh, this video and whew, so far so good. I am about 186 pages in and it is something like 360 pages long so right around the halfway mark and I didn't know much at the start of this about what this is about other than it's a thriller and so uh, just to give you a little bit of the synopsis, I'll keep it vague, don't worry, because the back of the book is very vague and I would keep it that way for you if you were wanting to read it. But it's basically about this couple, Aaron and Mark, and they are on their honeymoon in Bora Bora. They've got some things going on in their relationship uh, that they're kind of dealing with. But the main point of the plot is that Mark is a scuba diver and he wants to bring Aaron scuba diving because she hasn't really done it much before. She's kind of scared of it. And while they're scuba diving, they find something in the water. And that is it. That is all that the synopsis on the back tells you. That is all I'm going to tell you. Uh, but this book so far is so suspenseful and awesome. It's different than what I was expecting uh, going in based on that very vague synopsis. But I'm liking where it's going. I really cannot guess where it's going to go at all. Um, I would relate it on a suspense basis to No Exit by Taylor Adams if you've read that before. This book actually has more ratings right now on Goodreads than No Exit, but I've heard No Exit talked about a lot more on booktube and so I'm just going to throw it out there if you've read that one and you liked like the heart pounding, page turning, suspense of it that just makes you want to get to the end. So far I really recommend this book for that, but yeah, only halfway through. Definitely still a lot to happen, so I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm not going to speak too soon on what kind of rating this will be, but just wanted to let you know that so far I am loving it, and I think I'm going to finish this certainly by the end of tonight. Alright guys, good news. I have finished something in the water. 
Uh, so my last update, I was very hopeful for the end of this book. I was totally invested. The suspense was great. And I have to say that that carried on through the end. Uh, my enjoyment of this book was very high throughout, but something about the ending just didn't do it for me. And unfortunately, that seems to be the way it usually goes with thrillers. You know, it's so good, so good, so much build up, And then really the ending is kind of the make or break, whether it's an all time favorite or just a lackluster, you know, kind of mystery. And I wish I could say a little bit more about the details of this book and why I wasn't satisfied by the ending, but I don't want to give it away. Um, I think the intrigue of this book is how mysterious and vague the description of it is. And so I just don't want to spoil that. But what I can say is that I thought that the book was like 360 or 370 pages long, but the end of the book is actually a like a preview of this author's next book, which made me think it was longer. So when I was reading the end of this book, I didn't think it was the end yet. So I had, you know, kind of theories or I was wondering where else it was going to go. But that also disappointed me was that it was actually the end and I just wasn't expecting that. So <laughs> that's always disappointing when you think, you know, there's more coming, there's going to be more twists and things, but there aren't. But other than that, my thoughts are still a little bit up in the air about where I want to rate this book overall. I will come back with an update or with a wrap up at the end of this video, you know, and give my final ratings for each of the books. And so I'm going to ruminate with what exactly I want to rate this, but right now it's between like a three and a four probably. I really was invested and intrigued and I wanted to get to the end. So from an enjoyment aspect, it was really, really good. But the payoff, you know, kind of the most important thing about a thriller just wasn't there. So unfortunately, not a new favorite thriller, but I'm excited to keep on reading. I have two other thrillers for this video. And so I will be back when I start one of those. <music> Can you guess who I am trying to be right now? I just got done doing a super fun live show. Um, so Jess from Red by Jess does really amazing murder mystery parties. And today she just did one for Harry Potter, a Harry Potter murder mystery. And I got to play the role of the one, the only Dark Lord, Lord Voldemort. And it was so, so much fun. So she does them as a live show, but she definitely keeps them so you can watch them later. So I will link it below. She is also looking for participants for future murder mysteries. So if you are interested in being one of the cast members and uh, doing a little improv in <laughs> one of her shows, I will uh, also link that form below because she has a form for you to fill out um, with your interest. So I just wanted to hop on before I clean this off because if I do say so myself, it's a pretty good uh, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> hey guys, rainy day here. I am about to go pick up my daughter from my mom who was watching her for the work day and I am about to start the audiobook of The Lion Game actually. I didn't think that any of these books on my TBR were on Scribd or anything but then I just checked again and this one is so I'm really excited to get to reading it really don't know anything about it other than it's by Ruth Ware I read a couple other Ruth Wares before um I've read uh The Turn of the Key and The Death of Mrs. Westway and I'm very interested to know what some of her earlier thrillers are like I haven't heard great things by a lot of people but um I'm willing to give it a fair shot and I don't know anything going in so I'm ready to be surprised <music> First of all, don't, let's not even mention this. It's the quarantine look. I'm sure you guys are used to it yourselves um, and you stood on me. But I wanted to check in because I have finished The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. I did listen to this whole thing on audio. It was on Scribd and it's actually narrated by, I think I'm guessing the same woman narrates all of Ruth Ware's books because she also narrated 
the turn of the key and the death of Mrs. Westway and her voice is really good so I can see why Ruth Ware wants her to uh, be the narrator and um, unfortunately I don't have a lot to say about this one kind of goes along with some of the reviews I've seen that there's nothing terrible about this book it's just not great it doesn't make you want to keep reading it all felt very low stakes to me and to summarize the book it's about this woman who went to like a boarding school when she was younger um and she had these three really close friends and turns out that they did some things to get them kicked out of the school and now this woman has been called back by one of those friends because something has happened and she needs her help and so we're basically just uncovering you know what these girls did when they were in school why they have this bad reputation surrounding them and uh the repercussions that are happening to them now because of those because of that and like i said the stakes just felt really low because it was a whole bunch of stuff that happened to them in the past i didn't really believe that this main character had a lot to lose and the way the other characters are described they just sound like a bunch of you know mean girls and like this big uh clique that you just kind of wonder why why does this main character want to stay friends with them or keep their secrets or whatever why can't you know it just come out and whatever happens happens i don't know unfortunately like the reviews have said about this book not my favorite not the best definitely not the best ruth ware uh i probably will try out i know i own one other one i own in a dark dark wood so i'll definitely try that one out because i own it but who knows if i'll try any of her other ones out uh, I don't remember how many she has total, but with that said, I do have two more books left. I have Such a Fun Age and Whisper Network, and we are actually headed this weekend up to my husband's family's house up in North Dakota because um, it's Memorial Day weekend. We have a few days off, and it's like a seven-hour drive each way, so I'm going to get lots of hours in reading there. And once we're there, of course, too, I'll get some reading in. So I'm hoping to finish these next two books pretty quickly. They're also pretty short. I think Whisper Network is like just over three, like 340 pages long. And Such a Fun Age is like 300 pages long. So those should both be pretty quick. I don't have audiobooks for either of them, so I'll be reading them physically, but I'm excited to get to them. a pretty big update to give you now because it's been about a week since I've checked in. Uh, so like I mentioned, we went on an extended weekend trip up to North Dakota, which is where my husband's family lives. It's also where I went to high school, where I kind of grew up. And so that was really fun. It was good to see his family and we saw a couple of other friends and family members and we were obviously smart about it. We didn't see, you know, all that many people, but you know, the most important ones, it was really nice to see. And I have done some reading. So I mentioned that it's a seven hour drive each way and I was hoping to get a good amount of reading done there, but I actually didn't because first of all, my husband and I split the driving. And so I ended up driving, you know, seven of those 14 hours. And of the ones I wasn't driving, I was actually usually sleeping because with a baby, our new strategy for road trips is to do most of the driving at night so that she can just be asleep because trying to keep a baby happy in the car seat for that long of a drive is a nightmare. And so we learned from the last time we went home and this time we tried to do it pretty much all at nighttime. So when I wasn't driving, I was sleeping and I was not reading. But while in North Dakota, I did read and finish Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. And this is, I would call it like a hard hitting contemporary book. And I actually wouldn't necessarily recommend reading the blurb of this if you haven't, just because I think it's hard to say it spoils it because it's a contemporary. I don't know if spoiling a contemporary is even possible, but I do think it kind of gives some things away that happen at the end that aren't necessarily the most important parts of the plot and give away where the story's going. And I think that if you don't know that and you just go into it kind of blind um, and just let the story kind of take you over, 
and happen organically, I think that you'll get the most out of it. But I will tell you kind of the intro and the general premise of the book. So this follows a young woman named Amira who is black and she is a regular babysitter of this white family, particularly this two-year-old blonde little girl named Briar. And one night, uh, the mom of this little girl calls Amira and says, can you come over? It's an, kind of an emergency. I need you to take Briar out of the house uh, so that we can deal with some the police that are coming over to deal with this thing that just happened. And so Amira's like, yeah, of course. Um, so she comes, takes the little girl, and they go to a grocery store down the road. And while they're at the grocery store, Amira gets confronted by the security guard at that store, accusing her of basically stealing this little girl because she doesn't look like her mom. She came over in a hurry, so she doesn't look necessarily like you would think a babysitter looks. And of course, there's that racial implication too. And so very charged. It's kind of an intense opening scene and it goes from there. And that's, I think, all you really need to know is that the story is following Amira through that situation, but then after, because there are many things that happen after that, um, that Amira has to deal with and that that family has to deal with. And I really, really enjoyed my experience reading this book. And I don't know if I can necessarily speak to a lot of the racial and just social status uh, commentary that it has and the issues that it speaks about um, and that it explores just because I don't know what it's like. I have no idea what, you know, Amira goes through or what similar people to Amira go through and how they would relate to this book I think would be a lot different, a lot deeper than me relating to it, but I think that's it, that it's important that I read it. Um, and I think all I can do is encourage as many people as possible to read this book because it's definitely important. It definitely opens your eyes to uh, this situation and similar situations. I think it's easy to say that, yeah, that situation is wrong, but really thinking about what you would do in that situation or if there's anything you can do to prevent situations like that from happening in the future. This is an own voices author. Um, I assume that Kylie Reed knows exactly what she's talking about and that her commentary is much more important in this uh, realm of conversation. And so I will defer it to her to uh, to raise that awareness and to, to spark those conversations. And so I really, really enjoyed that book. Like I said, I gave it four stars. I'm really glad to have read that. I was hoping that I would love it and I really did. I also have started Whisper Network, which is a, it's classified as a thriller so far. I'm not getting super thrilling vibes, uh, but there are a lot of things that I'm really, really liking about this so far. Because I'm assuming it's a thriller, I haven't read too much into the plot, but so far we are just following a group of women who all work in the same office and their CEO has basically dropped dead out of nowhere and um, we're assuming that this new guy that everyone kind of hates is going to become the new CEO. And I'm not sure how that's going to affect everything, but we're getting perspectives from all of these women in the workplace. And I'm really enjoying that perspective right off the bat. I don't think that we get a lot of points of view of women in the workplace. I mean, we obviously get a lot of mothers and wives, you know, in their home life, but we don't get a lot of working women, I don't think. And I'm really liking that dynamic and things are happening that I absolutely relate to. Things are happening that um, kind of speak to the differences of men and women in the workplace and what kind of conversations go about and how women are looked at when they have to leave early for doing things with their kids versus if men have to do that. Or um, they're actually the very first scene in the book is a woman pumping in a lactation room and basically talking to another woman about how that's affecting her work and her relationship with her colleagues and how um, it's still kind of taboo when it shouldn't be. And I really enjoyed that as a new mom. I totally, uh, totally can relate to that. And I just really, really enjoy what's happening. It's kind of refreshing to get that perspective and to be I don't know if we have to be reminded that women exist in the workplace, but just that women are just as complex as men. They can have just as many responsibilities, maybe even more, um, and all these pressures put onto them and assumptions and stereotypes and just a lot of that is happening right now. I'm only uh, 
like 65 pages in so I still have quite a long ways to go in the book but I did just want to say that uh, so far I really am enjoying kind of this fresh perspective. It's very original and unique from other thrillers that I read and just books in general. I think it's giving a fresh take and really enjoying it. So very excited to finish this book. I'm hoping that I fly through it so that I can, you know, wrap up this video and get it up. But I will be back when I know a little bit more about the thriller plot. Not that I'll spoil it for anyone, but so that I can speak a little bit more to how I'm enjoying it as a thriller. <music> Whisper Network and I have to say that I enjoyed it. Um, I probably am gonna give it mm, three stars. It's probably closer to a three and a half. Also, by the way, I just uh, did some tie-dyeing so that's why my hand is purple so don't mind that. <laughs> um, but uh, some things I have to say about this book. Uh, off the bat, it's definitely not a thriller. And I can't remember if on Goodreads it actually says thriller or if it mostly says mystery. Because it is a mystery, but it's not a thriller. It's much more of like a workplace drama. Um, and there's some kind of courtroom type elements of it. And it takes place in a law firm or a, a company where these women are lawyers. And after reading like the acknowledgments and the bio of the author Chandler Baker, um, she was an attorney or actually I think is still an attorney so it's clear that she knows what those dynamics are like and what it's like specifically in law but just in general I think it definitely spans you know any workplace where women are trying to be successful but have added challenges. I could definitely relate to that. I think it had really good commentary and I liked where the story went. But other than that the mystery wasn't super compelling. I mean I don't think we were ever supposed to be really wondering about what happened. I mean, you don't know exactly how it ends, but you kind of, I think, know the gist and you know where it's going. There's nothing super surprising about the ending that totally comes out of left field or anything. So because of that, it's definitely not a new favorite mystery or thriller or anything like that, but I'm glad I read it. I think that it did have some insights that I'm glad to have been exposed to and it just is one of those books that I think I will continue thinking about for a while. So really enjoyed it. I think tomorrow I will come back with a little bit more wrapped up thoughts and I'll wrap up this whole video and with that I will also give a better wrap up of the book itself, a synopsis, um, just because it's still a little fresh in my mind right now. I think I need to step back for a second so that I can give the real high level overview um, and it's just about bedtime. So. I'm gonna go to bed. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. up this video to wrap up my thoughts on all the books I read and talk about what I want to do in the future. Uh, so like I said last night I finished Whisper Network and if you're wondering it is the next day and I was able to get a lot of the purple off of my hands so I'm glad about that it definitely looks better than it did. But anyway so Whisper Network to give a brief synopsis since I didn't do that last night this is about a group of women who work at this company in the legal side of the company and their CEO has just died suddenly and they are hearing rumors about who is going to become the next CEO and it's a man that they are not too fond of. He's a guy who has made them uncomfortable in the past and is possibly still making people uncomfortable and they're worried about uh, the state of the company if this guy becomes CEO. So it's kind of following 
them learning this news and figuring out what they should do about it, if, if anything. And then we also get interviews from the future where they are being questioned um, in some kind of court case. So it's clear that in the future something does happen uh, to this guy in line to be CEO, but we don't know what and we don't know if these women are guilty or, you know, what happens. I am ultimately going to end up giving this three stars. It's a high three stars. It is still something I would recommend as long as you know uh, those things going into it that it's not going to be, you know, a heart pounding thriller. Um, and in case I did not already say last night, I would give content warnings, um, trigger warnings to this book too, uh, for things like suicide, sexual harassment, sexual assault. Those are definitely heavily explored in this book. So if those are triggering to you, definitely tread with caution. I did want to let you know my thoughts on these books as a whole. Um, so you've heard my thoughts on them all individually. So Whisper Network, I gave three stars. Such a fun game, I or such a fun age, I gave four stars. The Lion Game, three stars. And Something in the Water, three stars. Which maybe don't sound like glowing ratings or glowing reviews, but I'm happy to have read these books and I generally enjoyed all of them uh, for different reasons. And I think how I would order them from favorite to least favorite, I think it would be like this. So Such a Fun Age was definitely my favorite. Um, I really liked its commentary and especially right now as I'm filming this, the Black Lives Matter movement is very much in the limelight and all over social media. And by the way, I have been very active on Twitter. Um, you know, donating, sharing petitions, just speaking up, using my voice and my small platform. And I definitely recommend to follow uh, Black creators and listen to their voices and what they're saying and really support them, speak up for them, do what you can. And then Whisper Network, I just talked about three stars, probably my highest three star, more like three and a half. Um, Something in the Water by Catherine Stedman was uh, probably my third favorite, also three stars. But this was much more like the first half was five stars and the second half was lower and so you know it averaged out to a three star and then in last place the lion game by ruth ware um not a new favorite thriller definitely not and pretty boring reading experience so that would be the one that i recommend the least but like i said really happy to have read all of those books and i'm gonna put a graphic here ish putting the list of all the books that i've read so far uh from reese's book club just to show uh, how many I've enjoyed, what order I like them best. I don't think any of these four books have become my new favorite, but they're definitely scattered throughout the top 10. And because of that, I definitely, definitely want to read more from Reese's Book Club. I think that it will be interesting to start to read books that I didn't initially have on my radar and have on my TBR because these four books, I already owned them. I was already planning on reading them eventually anyway, but I think the benefit of you know, a book club is that it's introducing you to books that you might not necessarily have already wanted to read. And I think that would be really interesting to see how I enjoy the books that I know nothing about. And so I think that will probably be my next venture. Maybe not in the immediate near term because I don't want these videos to be, you know, too close together. But in the near future, I will try some more books from Reese's Book Club. So with that, please let me know if you have read any books um, in the Reese's Book Club. They all, I think, have or I mean, some of the copies have this little emblem on them that say Reese's Book Club, so you know if they have been picked. And with that, I don't think I have much else to say, so I will go ahead and leave you here. So thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in my next one.